Hello YouTube, Simon Revolution here, and today I'm going to do a deck tutorial. Um, I had a few requests for like help on how to build a deck, so I'm not really sure how to go about this, but I'm going to try to do the best I can. Um, from all my experience and from all my different strategies, uh, I think I should have some good input. But I'm not like the most mathematical player in the game, like I don't really get that in depth, I'm more of a casual player. But from that standpoint, hopefully I can help you out on how to do that. So here we go. Um, first thing I want to say, there's basically three general main strategies to the game. You can do your rush, you can do your turtle slash boom, where, which are like pretty similar, and then you can do your fast fortress. Your rush is basically you attack as early as possible. Um, you generally send in your military units as your second shipment, um, and then you try to attack and win within the first 10 minutes generally. That would be a rush strategy. Your turtle slash boom strategy would be you don't attack, you set up defenses instead, and instead of sending all your shipments on military units, it's on economic units, so you get a stronger economy, especially if the other person does a rush, you'll be able to have a better economy than they do um, later in the game. And then once you have that strong economy, you can easily take them out while you're more advanced in a later age. And then your fast fortress is basically you go as fast as possible to the fortress age, get the advanced military units from the fortress age, especially the cannons, and use those to take out your enemy who will have the age two units that aren't as advanced as are as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but yeah, those are general three strategies. Um, we're kind of I'm just gonna go through um, my different nations here. Uh, not all of them, just some of them, so you get the general idea of what what it means um, for each strategy and how you can use different cards to your advantage. But the thing is, is that every nation is different, generally. Um, obviously, the European nations are similar, the Native Americans are pretty similar, the Asian says are pretty similar, but <clears throat> generally, each one's different, and you have to play to each one's strengths. So, for example... Um, <clears throat> God, my voice is... Okay, I'm sorry. For example, um, or if you're Britain here, which I love the British. Um, let's go down to... This is the deck I use on my British Boom video. Um, so, as a general rule of thumb, the most safe, easy, straightforward card, the first card you're ever going to send, is a three villi card, or a villager card of some sort, if the nation has it. Um, Portugal doesn't have it. I'll help you and show you what you want to do there if, if you're playing as Portugal. But generally, you're going to send this card as your first card. What this does is give you an economic boost at the beginning of the game. It helps you get to a certain amount of villagers uh, quickly before you age up. So you have a strong eco while you're aging up. So once you age up, there's a bunch of things you can do. Um, so this is like pretty standard British deck. You're going to want to have, if you're any nation, you're going to want to have at least one unit military card in case of a strong rush at the beginning that you can send out in defense. So, yes, you have your Minutemen, and this is... Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but you are going to want to have another shipment just in case you really need the units to help defend them. Musketeers are good versus cavalry, so if he does cav early, you can send him out and take out his cavalry. They're decent versus infantry. They're a good all-round unit to have, especially in the first age. I mean, second age. So, as the British... So, you're going to want to have that in your deck basically no matter what. As the British, the British are really good with their houses because they produce settlers when you make houses. So what you're going to want to do is take advantage of that. So you have two wood shipments here. You send in the wood shipment, you can build a ton of houses, you get tons of XP from that, and then you can send in another wood shipment and build tons more houses. You can send in five villagers and boost your eco that way. Um, so you just want to take advantage of these civilizations. So that's how the British would do it, for example. Um, and then another thing that I do most of the time is I would have the 700 coin shipment in there. So what this does is it helps you advance quickly from the second age to the third age by 70 center coin. It costs 1,000 coin and 1,200 food to age up to age 3. And this coin helps get you that boost there because all you need to have is 300 coin, um, which you could easily save from your uh, beginning crates if you're trying to go fast fortress. Or you can um gather some treasures or you can just put a few bills on it easily to gather 300 coin and then you can get that quick age up um so that'd be really good if you're trying to do a fast fortress so for example if i had 200 coin at the start of the game all i would need to do is collect 100 coin send in this card and boom i have enough coin to age up all you would have to do is have your villages on food and boom you get the fast fortress age up it's that simple um so other cards here <clears throat> 
you're gonna almost always want to have <clears throat> excuse me I have like Ebola but anyways uh, you almost always want to have two factories in your deck I always have them especially as Europe you always have to have them um, late game you're gonna want to send those in they produce you can use artillery if you want to they produce food wood or coin and it's just the greatest thing to have um, if you don't have it and the game goes late age and the other opponent has it, you're most likely going to fall out because of that. Um, so that's something you're going to want to have. Other cards here, I generally always have one fort card um, just in case. It, you can't go two forts. Um, I mean, if it's late game and you have two forts around your base, it's going to be really difficult for him to come in and attack. Um, so that's just something to have here. Also, you're going to want to have these Royal Mint cards and the refrigeration cards. I choose these over, for example, a textile mill for coin because this improves your work rate for the mine and the plantation. Well, this only does it for the plantation. So if you still have people on coin mines, this will boost them as well. Um, and then this is the same thing for this. It produces it for mills and hunted animals and berry bushes. So it's all food sources. So I def definitely recommend having these two cards in your deck as well. You're going to want to have the fast... Um, recruitment time cards here. Uh, if you're Russia, you're going to want to have definitely both infantry recruit time cards as taking advantage of the Russians. Um, you're going to want to have military upgrades. The general rule of thumb, I would have at least the ones that increase both hit points and action damage in age 3 in there. Um, if you're not going to have the regular, like the just defense ones and the just attack ones for age 2. Um... And I like to have this heavy fortifications card in there. It produces, like, makes all your defensive stuff maxed out. It's super easy to send in. It maxes out your walls, maxes out your outposts. Um, it's kind of, it maxes out your fort. Like, it's just a really easy card to send in. Uh, it saves a ton of resources and gets all your defenses maxed out. But, yeah, that's kind of the general rule of thumb for, like, your general, like, taking advantage of the British, some of your general stuff. Other general stuff I want to say, um... So, for example, if you're doing a turtle strategy, let's go out to the Portuguese here, because the Portuguese are super known for turtling. Uh, build deck. All right, sweet. Let's do my... Let's see. I think it's a rush one, yeah. All right, so this is my turtle strategy for the Portuguese. So, you're going to want to have your Colonial Militia card in there, because, especially for the Portuguese, when you age up, you get another town center. Having both of those town centers with extra militia, that's like... 20 plus militia. I don't know the exact number, but it's a extreme amount of militia, and you can easily defend like several attacks with that amount of militia, and it increases your town center attack. So, for example, if you're doing a turtle, you're gonna want this card in your deck. You might want to send it as your first card, especially as Portuguese, because this is why the Portuguese are so good at turtling. They don't have a villager card to send in. So what you might want to do at the very beginning is send in this card. Boom, you instantly got your defense boosted on your town center, and you got extra militia you can send in. Uh, you got two batches, basically. So you got four batches of militia you can send in, age two, when you have your second town center up. And then both those town centers get 50% attack boost. So it's like a really simple um, turtle card that you send in early. Another thing here is if you're trying to do a water boom, um, you're going to want to have your schooners card. Always, always, always copy your deck remove the least important card from your deck and add in the schooners card for a water deck because this makes your boats cost 40 wood and on all water maps this is a must like you can easily produce boats for 40 wood you can produce two and a half for the amount of one and that adds up so much over time and this really helps you take advantage of water maps um this is like my water rush or water turtle deck uh so i have some other water producing cards here we've got whale uh, improvement and fishing improvement there. Um, we got a caravel and a boat improvement, and then we got some more um, cards here. So that's kind of like your general, um, like taking advantage of water, uh, turtle stuff. Um, but yeah, so that that's a pretty simple um, Portuguese thing. Another thing here is so for example, if you're doing a rush, you might want to save your first shipment age one and send in two military age, uh, shipments age two. Um, but Portuguese aren't the best at rushing, but that could just be a general rule of thumb. Like, you could see that in my Portuguese um, rush video. I kind of did that. So, yeah, that's that. And, like, here, the Portuguese have this extremely awesome wall-producing card, so if you're doing turtle, probably going to want to have that there, too. Simple stuff like that. Um, Let's see here. 
Uh, let's go to... Where are we at? Let's go to a native civ. We'll do... Where are the Aztecs at? Do I not have an Aztecs? Oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was like, oh, I've played Aztecs like a, more than once. So I'm sure I have a deck. All right. Build a deck. So, let's see here. Turtle Strat. I don't even know if I use this. So... Yeah, okay, this is the rush. This is my Aztec rush. So, like, I always... This is kind of confusing, like, if you're new to it. But I always name my deck the opposite of what my strategy is. Because if your opponent looks at your deck and he's like, Oh, turtle strategy. He might not really double think it. But you're going to do a rush and he's going to prepare for a turtle. And you might catch him off guard. So, just little things. <coughs> you can name it whatever you want. You can name a rush if it's a rush. It's all up to you. Um, But, yeah, so here's a rush deck for... The Native Americans, basically you have a bunch of different um, unit cards here. Like, you're going to have these uh, two sets of those, and you have some spear guys here. Those are really good for rushing. And then you have some of these guys here you can send in, um, who else are really good. Um, basically, you're going to want to have a balance between your military and your military and your economic cards. So, for example, after I send some of my military cards, let's say my rush didn't work. You're not going to have all military cards, or else you're not going to be able to recover. So I have five villagers I can send in here, maybe to boost my eco for villagers, or I can produce some wood, um, maybe make some more houses, or get in some upgrades in the market and stuff. Or I could send in three trade posts so I can get that trade trade post monopoly, and uh, get send in maybe more of my military shipments that way. So you kind of want to set in different planned routes depending on how your strategy is going. Like, necessarily, you don't want to have to... You don't want to make a deck where you have to send in every single card. You're going to want to make a deck where some cards help you out in certain situations, and some cards help you out in other situations, and you make a really dynamic deck that works out for different situations. So, for example, if I'm playing... Let's say I'm playing Great Britain. Um, I don't want to have a deck that has all infantry cards, um, because he might have... A bunch of longbows that will easily counter my infantry. I'm going to want to have some cavalry cards in there. Um, let me just go back to Great Britain real quick. Um, or let's say, yeah, let's say I'm, I'm Great Britain against Great Britain. I'm going to want to have some cavalry cards in here, like my cavalry recruit time and my cavalry combat card to boost my cavalry so I can counter his longbows extremely effectively. Um, so just little things like that that help you in certain situations. Let's go to a native, or I mean, uh, Asian civilization here. Let's do Japan. Let's go right here. All right, so here are the Japanese, a very strong civilization indeed. Um, wow, I only have 24 cards. Make sure you have all your cards filling your deck. Um, so here's Japan. So... Age 1, they have a 2 villager card. Personally, I don't like sending that in because I know that the European civs are going to send 3 villagers. I would send in a trade empire card or save my shipment and send in 2 batches of Ashiara Musketeers as soon as I age up. So it's all depending on how you want to do it. Because to me, I don't want to send it in because it's easily countered by another... I think an extra villager instead. So why not do a quicker age up and send in more military cards and get to them quicker? As you can see in my like Japanese rush videos, that's kind of what I do. Or like the India rush video. I forgot my India deck here. Um, where's India? There we go. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. I was like, don't like out. Okay. Um, I think this is the one I use for my rush. Yeah. So, they don't have, just like the Portuguese, they don't have villagers as their first card. So, to take advantage, and some people might see it as a negative, but to take advantage of it, you don't need to send in villagers. Just age up and send in two military shipments immediately. Or you can age up and send in some wood, and then some um, more military units. You don't necessarily have to rely on villagers. Yes, having villagers at the very beginning is really good, but if you go off and do a different strategy, it can kind of counter in different ways. I think that's it. Let me see if I have anything else um, I really want to go to. Not really. The only other general thumb I could kind of see um, is that you don't want to, like, over... Like, you don't want to do all of one kind of card. You don't want to do all resource cards or all military cards. I kind of said it before, but just to emphasize, you don't want to do all villager cards. You want to have a nice mix of them, so you, depending on the situation in the game, 
you can choose accordingly. And then one more thing is that don't like load up on all age four cards or all age one cards. You want to have a nice balance. So for age four, the chances of me being in age four compared to one, two, and three is low. You're going to be in age one, two, or three if you're in age four. So you're going to want to have a bunch of age one, two, or three cards that you can send in at all times. Age two is probably the most important set of cards you're going to have because you're for sure going to go to age two. You're not necessarily going to go to age three. You're not necessarily going to go to age four. So make sure your age two cards are abs like you're very comfortable with having those cards. Some of these other cards here, like this one, like increases all actions damage. That's just a boost if I get to age four. I don't need that card. Or this card, for example. I'm pretty sure it reduces elephant population or something. Um, yeah, reduces elephant population. I don't need that. But in age four, that could be very helpful if I need to get a bunch of elephants to knock out my enemy. And then like other cards here. But most of these are like unit improvement cards. Like, those really help if you're in the age, but you don't need them. Like, here you're going to need some really important cards. Um, so, yeah, just kind of balance it all out as much as you can. Um, let me see if there's any other nations. I'll go to Russia real quick. Because um, Russia's kind of, like, their own thing. Um, like, once again, they don't have villager cards. Um... So depending on how you want to age up, you might want to send in economic theory to get a boost overall. Um, you might want to wait for the age up, send in some streetlets, um, or send in some wood, or send in some coin. It's all up to you. Um, obviously, have take advantage of the quick infantry. You want to have both infantry train time cards. You're going to have both factories. And for me, I take advantage of Russia having forts. Some people do, some people don't. You can send in three forts as Russia, and you can make your musketeers build them. If you saw my Russia Turtle video, take advantage of that. It helps and helps you win games. If I have three forts compared to my guys, if say if he has one, he's going to have a much more difficult time attacking me than I'm going to have attacking him. And that could be the difference. It could be something as simple as that. And I have my ult heavy fortifications card. My forts going to be upgraded. My walls are going to be upgraded. My outposts are going to be upgraded. That's going to be a very helpful for me. So that's kind of just a general rule of thumb. Um... Like, one more thing here, I was just thinking about it. If I'm doing Fast Fortress, have your two cannons in there. Um, it's kind of hard, because, like, the Dutch don't have um, cannons. Where's the Dutch? Here we go. Uh, they don't have cannons in. So, where is... This is my Fast Fortress deck. Um, so, instead, I have the Swiss Pikes. I have the Rutairs. I have the Highlanders. I have my fort. I have my four outposts. Um, so, depending... Let's say I'm getting attacked. I can send the four outpost. Send behind my town center and easily knock them out. Or let's say I need to get uh, map territory. I can send this in, get some map territory. Let's say I want to attack. I can send in some units. Let's say I want a better economy. I can send in some more Iconic cards. So it's just as simple as that. Just balance it as much as you can. If you have any qu questions on choosing a card for some nation that you're uh, making, ask me. I can help you make a decision. It's not going to be the perfect decision, but I can give you my thoughts on it and just a different perspective. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. And I will see you guys later.